if we're going to talk about uh, athletic scholarships and how uh, how they function, you've got two types of scholarships. You have equivalency scholarships and headcount scholarships. Um, and they the headcount scholarships are in general, I, again, these are pretty general terms, but typically one scholarship goes to one student athlete. So most of the time, assuming that it's fully funded, um, a scholar, if a coach has five scholarships, uh, that will go to five athletes. And if they've got a larger recruiting class or you know, many more student athletes than that, they've got, um, they've got a whole bunch of kids on their team who aren't getting any money. Um, so for the boys, that's primarily football and basketball. Those are the head count sports. The rest are equivalent. The rest of the sports for the boys are equivalency. For the girls, you're really looking at girls, you know, in the, again, the major sports, you've got girls basketball and girls volleyball. I believe um, gymnastics and tennis, am I missing one, uh, are, oh, no. <laughs> so, is it so swimming? The, wait, no, 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 no. swimming's equivalency. Um, yeah, you, I think you're gymnastics, right. Volleyball, volleyball, gymnastics. gymnastics. Yeah. yeah. Oh, ten, yeah. So volleyball and basketball are the two biggies. And women's volleyball is one where there is a giant disparity between the fact that the girls get a full, you know, a full ride essentially, and the boys. There's like 4.5 scholarships for an entire team of boy, boys volleyball. <laughs> so. There, there is a, there is a, uh, a big difference there. So with equivalency at the, uh, scholarships, as equivalency sports, um, it basically the coach has a pool of money that is the equivalent of however many scholarships are the maximum that are allowed. And that, that coach can choose to divide up that money any way they want. So they could not give any money to their freshmen and they only give it to you once you've played for them for a year. Um, they could choose to give 25% to everybody. You know, it just, it just depends on how they want to incentivize their student athletes. And um, so uh, basically all the sports outside of the ones already mentioned are equivalency and that's how they function. Um, if you go to a website called scholarshipstats.com, you can see by sport what sort of scholarships are offered for each sport and the maximum number, because the numbers differ for, for maximum number of scholarships for the boys and the girls for each sport. Um, for, and even they differ with, for, from division one and division two, and then none offered in division three. So, um, and, and NAIA does offer athletic scholarships, but they're not managed by the NCAA, it's a different organization. Um, and then you also have uh, within community colleges, um, the, so there are two different uh, community college athletic associations across the country. There's the California Community College Athletic Association. In the state of California, we do not offer athletic scholarships, but every other state does. <laughs> So um, the National Junior College Athletic Association, you can go to their website and you can see all the schools that, um, that offer athletic scholarships. And that is another way for student athletes to, you know, if, you're, if you think that um, you would benefit by going to the junior college or community college route, um, just know that uh, those, there, there's another path there to make it to a four-year school that may include playing for two years for a community college and maybe even getting some scholarship money along the way. So, um, you know, that's, that's another important path. And given, given everything that's just happened with, uh, you know, the economy, COVID-19, um, staying, maybe families feeling like they want their, their student athlete to stay closer to home. Um, you know, those are some things to, to certainly consider.